gubernatorial Republican candidate, Mr. Jim Keat. Uh, Mr. Keat has served, two has served in the Arkansas House of Representatives, the Arkansas Senate, and he is the president of Tzatziki's Restaurant here in Little Rock, and he is, born, he is the former president and CEO of Barn Hills Buffet. Um, he has served on more than 20 civic and charitable boards and commissions, and he has won various awards and honors, including the National Humanitarian Award from the National Conference of Christians and Jews, and the Outstanding Legislator Award from the Arkansas Education Association. Without another moment, I would like to introduce Mr. Jim Keat. Well, welcome you again. My name is Jim Keat. I want to thank you for being here today on this gorgeous day, and I want to confess to you on the front end that I am not, in fact, an attorney. However, my wife, who is here today, Judy, where are you, uh, back here, was not only a graduate at UALR Law School in 1979, uh, she did that while having two children in law school. She had a 3.93 grade average. She was editor-in-chief of the Law Review and was clerking at the time. So all of you law students out there, if you want to aspire to something, there's the example. And you got stuck in the restaurant business. And, and I got stuck in the restaurant business. I started to go to law school, but I decided I didn't want to work that hard. Anyway, uh, my oldest son, Tommy, is also a graduate of UALR Law School. He graduated back in 2003 and was also on the Law Review. My oldest daughter, Chase, is a graduate of the University of Arkansas Law School. My son-in-law, Charles Crocker, is a graduate of ULR Law School in 2004. My two sisters-in-law are attorneys. My father was an attorney, and my father-in-law was an attorney. So needless to say, it is a rare occasion that I actually win an argument in the Keat household. <laughs> I'm happy to have you here today. Um, we have two fine candidates today that bring a different perspective to the race. The thing that they do share is that they're committed to Republican principles, and we're happy to have both of you here today. Let's give them both a round of applause. The most important thing today, gentlemen, is we want this to be civil, respectful, and issue-oriented. Any of those of you who applaud for a candidate, that time will be taken out of their time, so I want to caution you about that. The timekeeper is right on. It's set to be one hour. We've already had a, a coin to toss, which you have uh, witnessed. You will be able to uh, choose, Tim, whether you want to take the first question or assign that uh, to Scott. Sure. Okay. Tim will take the first question. We will alternate between the candidates. The candidates will have one and a half minutes to answer each question, and then there will be a 45 second rebuttal. Each candidate will be allowed five minutes uh, to close and to make your best pitch to the voters. And with that, we're gonna go ahead and uh, start the debate. Do you all have any questions concerning the rules? All right. I have been assigned the task of drawing these out of the fishbowl, and then I have them printed here in front of me. The first question, which will go to Tim, is number eight. How do you believe the GOP should manage the disagreements between the socially conservative wing of the party and the libertarian wing of the party, particularly in light of the electoral opportunities that exist in November? I believe ultimately uh, this election cycle and, and all elections are about people. They're not about parties. They're about people and ideas. And I, as I go around the district to all eight counties, one of the things that has been particularly striking is that folks who don't agree on everything uh, agree on a lot of things. And uh, independents, conservative Democrats, and Republicans agree that we're spending way too much money. They agree that the private sector ought to be creating jobs, not the, not the government trying to create jobs. And they agree that this health care bill that just passed and became law uh, needs to go, needs to be reformed. And folks don't have to agree on everything. Uh, and I can tell you it's that unity of purpose on those key issues that drove the conservative success in Virginia. It drove the, the conservative success in New Jersey and in Massachusetts as well. So, you know, I think a lot of people who don't agree 100% uh, will be coming together this year 
and they will be voting conservative in November, and that's an incredible opportunity for, for conservatives like me uh, and, uh, and, our, and our party. All right, Scott, you have 45 seconds. Uh, you know, I've been endorsed by people like Robert Lewis, who's founder of Fellowship Bible Church and Men's Fraternity. Uh, you know, and I am a motorcycle rider. I'm a biker. And, you know, I have ridden with some of the most hardcore, uh, leather-clad libertarians you'll ever see. And it is really like one of them, like Ronnie Roberts, who owns Ronnie Cycle Shop out in uh, Southwest Little Rock. And, you know, he's a big supporter as well. Um, I have always had the ability in my life to be able to bridge gaps and befriend people and, uh, you know, from all walks of life. And this is something that I feel real strongly about. This is a, a group of, you know, the, the libertarian wing of the party right now. I think that, that I'll be able to unite that, that group into our party.